Hey, welcome back everybody to the next episode of FP101X. And today we're going to talk about uh, recursive functions. Well, what is recursion? Well, I have here a stack of trays and my favorite fruit. By now you all know that I love bananas. Um, and I need to eat this um, a whole bunch of bananas. And if we're going to do this recursively, so we're going to eat the first banana, and then, oh, but before I do that, I need to eat the next banana. Oh, so I have to put this one on top of this tray, and then, oh, I have to eat the next banana. My goodness, I'm eating a lot of bananas, and look at that stack growing there. Next banana, and finally I have my last banana, and I can put it on the stack. And look at this, a beautiful stack of bananas. See if we can see them. Now the problem is that what we have done here is we have created a quite a large stack of bananas. And if we would have a big bunch of bananas, that stack would overflow. So a better way to eat the bananas is to not start with the next banana until you finished the first one. And in that case, you only need one tray to um, finish all your bananas. Um, and that is called tail call elimination. And tail call elimination is um, a very important concept when you're using recursion to define control structures. Um, and in imperative languages, typically you don't have tail call elimination and therefore you have specialized control structures. But in Haskell, um, we can define, we can um, safely define our control structures using recursive functions um, because we will never have this giant stack of uneaten bananas. Great, let's look at some code. Enough, uh, I, I think I have had enough bananas for the rest of the year. Um, and the reason Haskell folks love recursion is that it's often a very natural way um, to define functions. For example, um, here's a way to define uh, the factorial function. So here's like, yeah, uh, uh, we have seen this one before. So we take the list of values between one to n and then we uh, multiply them all together. If we are going to evaluate this factorial of four, we um, unfold the definition, that was product uh, one to four. Um, one, the list one to four is product uh, one, two, three, four, um, and the product was just kind of uh, uh, multiplying all the numbers. So there you see the product of one, two, three, four is one times two times three times four, which is 24. Here's a way to define factorial using recursion. And we have seen um, how to define recursive functions over lists and by taking the list, checking whether it's like the empty list or whether it's the um, head followed by the tail. And in some sense, this kind of recursive function, the recursive function over numbers, is nothing different. So we, we have two cases. We have the fact whether the number is zero, or in this case, whether the number is n, and in that case, the recursion will be on n minus one. Um, and in previous version of Haskell, there were so-called n plus k patterns where you could write the factor of zero and the factorial of n plus one, but um, n plus k patterns have been deprecated, so now we ha we'll have to write it um, in this form. But apart from that minor detail, what you can see is that it's very, very similar to the way um, you define recursion over lists. There's two cases, zero and n, and if it's zero, it's one, and otherwise, you just take the factorial of n minus one times n. And if we evaluate this form of factorial, you will see the, that stack of bananas 
um, appearing because you know you see that there's you know there's the factorial um, going to the right uh, until we have executed everything and then we multiply going back popping off the stack to get back to six. All right. The recursive definition uh, that we have given, of course, will not terminate, or um, a fancy way to say that is it will diverge um, for numbers less than zero. And uh, if we uh, look here, let's go back a few slides. Um, if n is less than zero, then we just, you know, uh, th then this case doesn't apply. So we multiply n with the factorial of n minus one, which is even more less than zero, and so on and so on. So this will never terminate, and it will cause a stack overflow. So some functions, um, like factorial, can be defined either recursively or defined in terms of um, other functions. And whether you define something using recursion or in terms of other functions, or you take, you, know, you, you, you take this recursion pattern and abstract it as a higher order function and then use it to define another function, that's all a matter of taste. In the end, you decide as a developer what is the most readable for other developers, all right? Um, so th there's no you know, strong answer when or not to use recursion. The code just has to be as clear as possible. But one advantage of recursion is that you can use um, induction to prove properties um, of your function. Let's look at another example of defining a recursive function. Um, where uh, we're using this product function that we uh, used in the uh, earlier definition of factorial, um, and let's define that using recursion over lists. So in this case, the structure is exactly the same. There are two cases. We either have the empty list or we have a list of n cons n's. Um, so we look at the recursive structure of lists and then we define the function over that recursive structure. And the same with numbers. We look at the recursive structure of numbers and then we define the functions kind of you know, according to that structure. So in this case, if we have the product of the empty list, well, that is one. If we want to take the product of a value n on top of a list n's, what do we do? We take the product of the rest of the list here and then we multiply that by n. All right, so this is a very easy way to define this function using recursion. Um, and of course, you know, as we will see, we can take this function and abstract the pattern into a higher order function that just does the recursion and then we can plug in the, uh, the times and the one. But if we if execute this product, we unfold the definition so it's like two cons three, four. So if we unfold that a couple of times, you get two times product of three, four. We do that a couple of times until we arrive here, and then we pop the stack to get 24. All right? So you see that the answer is exactly the same as the recursive uh, definition of factorial. The only thing is that in this case, the recursion is hidden in this product function. So if we take the product of the numbers one to n, really we're defining the function using recursion as well. And you can show that when you do, when you fuse these two functions, the function that creates a list from one to n and the product function, that what you get is effectively the recursive definition of factorial. Good. Let's look at another function. Um, that we can define recursively over lists. Um, and here you see, again, we have this, um, the recursive structure. So if it's empty, the list is empty, well, the length of that empty list is zero. And if the list is not empty, we don't care really what the first element is. We compute the length of the rest of the list, 
and just add the one to it. Super obvious. Uh, again, it follows the recursive structure of the list. So it's kind of defined by induction uh, on, on the structure of the list. So length of one, two, three, one plus length of two, three, unfold, 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 until here, and then we add them up and we get the answer that we expect, three. Here's another function, um, reverse, empty list, the reverse of the empty list is empty list, and if we want to reverse um, x cons x's, we just add x on the other side. So if we execute it like this, you see that we're appending the elements from right to left, actually from right to left, um, and then the list gets reversed. So one, two, three turns into three, two, one. Of course, we can also define recursive functions that are not that don't recurse over just one argument, but over several. We have seen in the previous chapter the function zip, and how do we define zip? Well, zip took two lists, and it would take every element of the two lists and combine them into a pair. Um, so, easiest thing here is to look at the last clause here. So, if we have two non-empty lists. We take the head of both, put that in a pair, and recursively zip the rest. Now, when do we stop? Well, we stop when either of the two lists is exhausted, in which case we return the empty list. Okay? And of course, we have to put these cases first here, because there's a wildcard pattern here that would otherwise um, not work. Good. A few more functions. Drop takes an integer and a list and returns a list. And what this thing is doing, it's recursing over um, both the integer and the list. So in this case, when we say we want to drop zero elements from a list, well, that's the same list. If we have the empty list, we can drop whatever we want, but you know, we won't get very far, so we just return the empty list. And otherwise, we recurse both over the list and over the number. And again, since we don't have n plus k patterns, we have to use n minus 1 here on the right hand side. So drop of n and whatever cons x's is drop of n minus 1 and x's. So here we recurse over the structure of the number and the structure of the list. Um, the last example here on the slide um, appends two lists. If I want to append the empty list to another list, that is the other list. And then if I want to append a list x cons x's to a list y's, well, what do I do? I first append x's to y's and then cons x on top. Super obvious. Thank you so much and see you in part two.